Welcome into another edition of Sports Junkies here at RacingSportsZone.com. I'm Steve Sparky Pfeiffer. He, of course, is Gary Wolf. Well, I'm from the fan. He's from the Racine Journal Times. Let's talk about this Bucks basketball team uh, as they get ready to head into the playoffs. Really down through the rough stretch. Now the rest of the way out pretty easy. You got all teams below you in the standings except the Cavaliers between here and the uh, at the end of the, the season. Mm -hmm. Right now as we tape this, the day after the Bucks beat the Bulls, it's the Bucks and the Raptors would be that first round matchup. Which is the easier matchup for you in your opinion uh, looking at the playoffs? Bucks Bulls, Bucks Raptors. Oh, bu Bucks Raptors without a doubt. Uh, kid, you know, coached uh, the Brooklyn Nets last yep. year and their opening round playoff opponent was Toronto. And you know what happened there. Right. So so Kid has the Raptors figured out, plus plus the fact that the Raptors are a relatively young team. They, they don't have a lot of, of veterans sure. on that team. So they're more prone to playoff mistakes, not playing playoff basketball. Um, I'll go on record. If they play the Raptors, the Bucks are going to beat them. I'll go right, right now. I'll, I'll say that. If they play the Bulls, the series will not turn out in favor of the Bucks. But if they play the Raptors, I, I'll put... I'll put the, the one thing that Raptors have going for them is their home court advantage. They're, they're tough to be at And home. Valanciunas. Right. And, who the Bucs have no answer for. Right. But again, they, they have a lot of inconsistent players in that team. Oh, yeah. And, and the other flip, the other thing to the Raptors is they're not a good road team. They're like about a 500 road team, so they're, they're not going to play well in Milwaukee. Now, I'll, I'll stand by the my Bucs are sub-500 on they, the road. Yeah, well, that, that's fine. Because, you know, you're playing Toronto anyways. You don't expect to win. But they'll steal one somewhere along okay. the line. But my feeling is if they play the Raptors, they'll beat them. If they play the Bulls, they'll probably be over in five or six. They can only beat the Raptors if Michael Carter Williams played like he did against the Bulls. Otherwise, they're not going to beat anybody in the playoffs. He has to play at a higher level than he's played at since he's been a member of the Milwaukee Bucks. You didn't make this trade to win a series in the playoffs. That's not why you made the trade. But now that we're going to be there, then if you're going to, I think, advance in this round... Mayo and Dudley have to play like they did in the first half. Absolutely. And Michael Carter-Williams has to be consistent and not turn over the basketball. And everybody was talking about uh, Carter-Williams last night having a big game for the first time since his first game right. with the Bucks, which is understandable. But I thought the real key was O.J. Mayo. I agree. You know, Mayo, Mayo, came, off, awesome. Mayo came off the bench, got 13 points. And do you realize this, Steve? In the, his last four games, he had 13 points combined. Yeah. So they need O.J. Mail to provide them instant offense. And they need Dudley to hit a couple threes and stretch that floor out and get Absolutely. a little room. I mean, that that all goes into this of what's going to happen. Now, part two to all of this is I don't want to face the Bulls, mainly because I don't want to deal with their fans. I mean, more so than anything <laughs> else, we talked about this last night. Are, are they the most obnoxious fans in, in the NBA? I don't know if they're obnoxious, but I mean, they are. <laughs> last night we talked about it on the Pink State Basketball Post Game Show on the fan. And I just, I said, I think if the Bucks and the Bulls face each other in the first round, it'll be 80-20 Bulls fans. I heard you say that. Um, and you don't yeah. think it'll be that No, I, I think it's going to be a Bucks favorite, like 60-40. But there's going to be a ton of Bulls fans. And the, and the problem is... They were chanting go Bulls last night in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that, that, that's happened in the past during the regular season. But, but once, now they're playoff tickets. I know. I agree. But I think that's when the bandwagon Bucks fans get back on the bandwagon. So it, it wouldn't surprise me. Gary, I, I just see... Bucks season ticket holders that sit in the lower bowl, mm -hmm. getting offered two to three times face value. From I Chicago agree. Fans, I agree. They're not going to say no. They're going to go. Here you go. Well, well, I'm well, I'll give you another example or, or amplify on that. A, a ticket for a Bucks Bulls game that I went to recently, courtside. You want to take a guess how much it was? Courtside where? In Chicago at the United Center. Oh, I don't know. Three thousand. Two thousand dollars for a courtside seat, and if you sit over by the players, it's two thousand five hundred. Okay. That's about ten times what it costs for a Bucks game at the Bradley Center. So yeah, if, if somebody from Chicago wants to buy a ticket, they're going to the they're ticket. get a ticket. You know, right. it'll be that simple. But I don't think they're, it, it's going to be eighty twenty seems. Now like. that's why I like it to be the. That's another reason I like it to be the Raptors. Okay, you don't have to worry about both. Exactly, fans. that's not. A, but yeah, let's say it is the Raptors. Do they sell out these games? Uh, right. I think it's. I, I think it's, it's going to be call. tough. Yeah, I, I, I think agree. it's going to be a tough sell. I, I agree. They they have to get some kind of momentum going into the playoffs because you're not going to sell your tickets like the day before the playoff games. Right. That's why I'm saying if if I'm uh, the general manager of the Bucks and I'm Jason Kidd, I'm telling my my players talk up the playoffs, sell your team. George Carl was brilliant at, at marketing yeah. his team. Dell Harris was brilliant at it. Uh, Don Nelson. They talked about their team and got you know the general public excited about it. Right now, there, there's not a lot of excitement coming out of that camp. No, well, I mean, from the fan base in general. Right. And, and now you have the logo thing. 
We talked about it in a different video. He's Gary Wolf of the Racing Journal Times. I'm Steve Sparky Fiber from Sports Radio 1057 FM, The Fan. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Sports Junkies here at RacingSportsZone.com.